Good day, everyone, and welcome. Thanks for joining the Cognitive Systems Institute speaker series call. Today, I'm happy to introduce Kevin Sullivan. He is an associate professor in computer science at the University of Virginia. His PhD in computer science is from the University of Washington, where he worked with David Notkin on software architecture and evolution. He has worked on issues including modularity and the economic value of flexibility in design, programming language features for aspect-oriented modularity, and formal methods for design space exploration. He is the founding associate editor of the New Journal of Learning Health Systems and is co-chair of a series of three ongoing workshops on cyber social learning systems sponsored by the Computing Research Association's Community Computing Consortium. Today, Kevin's going to talk to us about cyber social learning systems, and thanks for being our presenter, Kevin. I'll turn the call over to you. Well, Diane, thank you very much for uh, that introduction, and good morning, everybody. It's my, uh, it's my honor to be here. Um, today, I'm going to give uh, kind of a, 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 an interim report on, um, on this topic of cyber social systems and uh, some preliminary results coming out of uh, this series of CCC workshops uh, that I've uh, been uh, co-organizing over the last uh, six months or so. Um, my uh, collaborator, my co-organizer of that workshop series is Chuck Friedman, Chair of the Department of Learning Health Sciences at the University of Michigan. Um, so this, uh, this whole initiative came out of uh, Chuck uh, uh, and my earlier collaboration on what we called learning health systems. Uh, that's a construct framed by the Institute of Medicine, now the National Academy of Medicine, and uh, their deliberations uh, uh, are recorded in a long series of workshop reports out of the uh, out of the IOM. Um, uh, a, a, a challenge that I faced in um, trying to work on this topic of learning health systems, health delivery systems that reflect on their own performance, uh, derive new knowledge from data, and, and and subsequently improve their practice and performance. A problem that I had working in this space is essentially a kind of a, a lack of um, of um, uh, foundation support for the involvement of computer scientists in uh, in healthcare delivery systems. Uh, there's some modest support out of uh, one program in the NSF, but really there's not adequate support to bring the computer science community um, in a very substantial way uh, to bear on problems of um, uh, the construction and evolution, the realization of this vision of a of a learning health system at, at a national scale. So Chuck and I went to the National Science Foundation, had a long conversation with them, and came out uh, with the view that um, there was a larger issue of um, learning cyber social systems in general. These are, um, in particular, service delivery systems for healthcare, education, transportation, uh, defense, uh, you name it. Um, uh, and, uh, and it was our view coming out of that meeting that all of these systems um, could benefit enormously from the introduction of, of this concept of kind of self-monitoring, self-analysis, uh, uh, planning and implementation of improvements based on uh, knowledge derived from data, um, thereby turning these systems into learning health systems. So that's sort of the background for this. Uh, the NSF uh, encouraged uh, Chuck and me to go to the uh, Computing Community Consortium, a standing committee of the Computing Research Association, uh, whose mission it is to uh, encourage the community to engage in uh, visioning activities uh, to help define the future of computing research. And so that's what this is, is really all about. And the idea is that the outcomes of this uh, workshop series, which just finished last week, uh, will uh, help to uh, inform and advise policymakers uh, in the National Science Foundation and uh, other agencies um, uh, regarding future opportunities for research. So that's, uh, that's where all of this began. So let me uh, uh, advance to the first slide here. Um, the uh, uh, framing that we used for this uh, workshop series was as follows. We've made enormous progress on scientific and engineering principles for cyber physical systems as distinct from cyber social systems. Cyber physical systems um, essentially combine control theory uh, and sensors uh, with uh, computing uh, and actuators. Um, to enable uh, highly novel functionality and uh, improved performance in many kinds of physical systems. Uh, the 
uh, work that's been done in this area is leading us into an Internet of Things, a world of physical systems that are computational and connected at, at all scales. Um, and we're seeing just amazing improvements in system function and performance, things that we've never seen before, coordinated swarms of, of, of drones, for example. Um, the cyber physical systems community is, is, is at an interesting point, however, it's beginning to uh, have to look at the integration of cyber physical systems with very complex human and social uh, organizational uh, systems and phenomena. And uh, it's our view that the theoretical foundations, if you will, of the cyber physical systems community rooted in the integration again of control theory and discrete computing, um, really not up to the task of um, uh, providing uh, adequate uh, principles and foundations to guide the integration of of all of this technology into uh, complex human uh, and social systems, such as healthcare delivery systems, education systems, community service systems, uh, national defense systems, and so on and so forth. Um, so we envision a, a new class of systems, or uh, to recognize, to, to newly recognize a class of emerging systems uh, that we're calling cyber social learning systems. These are systems that leverage cyber physical systems technology, AI, uh, mach uh, machine learning, um, you know, software engineering uh, frameworks, uh, the whole gamut of, uh, of computer science and, and systems engineering capabilities um, to produce uh, socio-technical systems that are high functioning and continually improving. So you see a list here of the many domains in which we think these ideas uh, will play out. And uh, the particular focus of this uh, CCC workshop series was on uh, essentially uh, the design and operation of cyber social service systems, service delivery systems for healthcare services, for example, with quite audacious goals. So, you know, many of you probably know that uh, it's estimated that between 100 and 400,000 people die each year uh, due to avoidable medical errors in the United States alone. How can we reduce that by 90% within 20 years? Uh, 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 how can we um, uh, truly achieve uh, grand challenge problems in education, such as getting most children reading at grade level in the third grade? How can we provide radical transparency into um, the operation of, of cities and communities uh, and all of the services that they provide? Um, so this is the, uh, the overall framing of this effort. Now, my outline, I'm uh, sorry, I'm somehow missing a couple of bullets here, but uh, the outline of this talk is as follows, and I'm going to have to move along pretty quickly. First, I'm going to try to distinguish socio-technical, cyber-physical, and cyber-social systems to give you a framing for that, that latter term. Uh, next, I'll talk about some of the key elements of uh, cyber-social systems. And uh, finally, I'll just go through some of the emerging ideas that have come out of this, uh, this series of workshops. Um, and these are ideas contributed by uh, participants in these workshops. So let me start with the first bullet. I want to distinguish socio-technical, cyber-physical, and cyber-social systems. Socio-technical systems, it's a topic that's been studied for decades. Uh, these are viewed as systems comprising people, machines, computing, physical elements. There's a picture on the slide here of an air traffic control system, for example. And there are many service systems of this kind. Uh, key points are that these systems often are not designed for, uh, for rapid and, um, and comprehensive and dramatic learning. Um, we often see glacial pace of system improvement in these systems, and that's true in air traffic control, in healthcare, in education, and in many of these systems. It's not that they don't learn at all. They do, of course, uh, for example, uh, from uh, accident analyses, uh, but the systems overall are designed for very limited uh, uh, rates of learning and the emphasis is often on uh, performance and, and reliability as opposed to uh, rapid evolution toward uh, higher states of fitness. So let me talk quickly about human-in-the-loop cyber-physical systems. The central objective of uh, much of this work is to optimize the functionality and performance of physical devices as opposed to complex human-intensive socio-technical systems. Uh, all of this work in CPS, as I said, is enabled by advances in sensing and the integration of discrete computing uh, through a kind of um, integration of control theory and, uh, and, and logic leading to models such as hybrid automata. Um, these systems increasingly use machine learning 
And now we're seeing the integration of uh, discrete logic and probability theory um, to, to enable uh, cyber physical systems to deal with uncertain environments. These systems often involve humans in the loop to handle control, for example, when the machines are unable to do so. Um, but the tendency in this space is to progressively reduce uh, the human role uh, in these systems to the extent uh, that's possible. And so, um, you know, examples are uh, abound. Uh, so, for example, here's a picture of a basically a human-free cyber physical system. Uh, this is part of a Mercedes-Benz uh, manufacturing line, and uh, the robotics here clearly have all kinds of sensors and actuators, and they're going about doing their job of putting cars together. This technology has enabled uh, pretty amazing advances. Um, uh, here's a gentleman, uh, uh, Mr. Brown, sitting in his Tesla, uh, which, as everybody knows, is now capable of substantial uh, levels of, um, of automated uh, driving. Um, the Tesla system as a kind of distributed or decentralized cyber physical system is really quite incredible. Every car uh, is, uh, uh, employs machine learned models, among other things, to implement fast local control for obstacle avoidance, lane centering, um, uh, and, um, and these sorts of functionalities. Uh, moreover, every one of these vehicles is uh, interneted to the Tesla cloud, uh, which has collected upwards of a billion miles of, uh, of driving data so far, uh, much of it while uh, Tesla's autopilot uh, functionalities are engaged. Uh, machine learning and other forms of learning are implemented in the cloud, and then updates to the control uh, systems are downloaded uh, back into the vehicles uh, to improve their functionality. So in some sense, this is a learning, I mean, in a clear sense, this is a learning cyber physical system. Um, and it's quite impressive in uh, what it has achieved. Uh, here, for example, is a little bit of a kind of a cartoonish graph uh, that shows in gray uh, human lane centering performance and in red uh, lane centering performance uh, when autopilot uh, is engaged. Clearly, the car is doing a better job lane centering Strangely enough, you know, you see in the human lane centering a sort of bias to the right, and uh, maybe the machine needs to uh, learn uh, that uh, safety is improved by moving a little bit outside of the center of the lane, but that's a policy issue that could easily be implemented. Uh, more impressive is this chart here. It shows, uh, this is a, a, a chart from um, the very recently released uh, um, accident uh, analysis report. Um, uh, in, 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 in the wake of uh, a, cr a crash of a Tesla that uh, many of you have heard about. Uh, this data collected by Tesla shows that uh, when autopilot, uh, when auto steering is engaged as part of the overall autopilot functionality, the crash rate per million miles um, uh, is reduced by 40%. That's a remarkable, uh, that's a remarkable achievement. Uh, at the same time, uh, these systems are um, uh, still prone to uh, uh, failure modes, and in particular to new kinds of failure modes. So here's Mr. Brown's Tesla. After um, a truck crossed in front of Mr. Brown's path, he was watching a movie. Uh, the car went under the truck, uh, and uh, the top of the uh, car was sheared off, and, and Mr. Brown uh, lost his life. A little diagram of what happened uh, in this case. So what we see here is a cyber-physical system that works great. Uh, except when it comes to the interaction of kind of the human component uh, in the system, there was an issue of Mr. Brown's trust in the Tesla's autopilot functionality versus its trustworthiness relative to his expectations, uh, and there was a real mismatch there. Mr. Brown clearly was over-trusting the technology relative to its actual and even documented capabilities. Um, just the last bullet I want to kind of point out, a second less widely recognized failure mode in this case is that that car continued driving at, even after it passed under the truck. It didn't stop until it hit a telephone pole. Uh, so it's not as if the uh, trustworthiness of cyber physical systems is a resolved issue. Um, but what we see here is that as cyber physical systems technologies begin to interact with human beings, um, we have uh, to deal with a whole new uh, sets of phenomena. The CPS community is sort of inching up to and, and being forced to deal with CPS-human integration, uh, but its principles are not uh, adequately uh, developed to uh, deal with that uh, at a high level. So in some sense, we want to move the, the, the concept of cyber social systems takes us from this primarily cyber physical system, albeit with human in the loops, to notions of very large scale cyber social systems. 
So here's a similar picture from Chuck Friedman of a, a kind of a graphic of a learning health system at national scale. And what you see here is the idea that the nodes in this graph are now um, key elements of uh, healthcare delivery and research uh, 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 systems, research institutes, public health agencies, community practices, federal agencies, uh, health centers. Uh, and the idea now, of course, is that these systems are going to be learning, they're going to be computing, communicating with, um, with other uh, analytic uh, capabilities and, uh, and new knowledge and, and, and functionality and uh, so on and so forth will be delivered uh, back out to the edges of these systems, uh, resulting in uh, substantial improvements in functionality and performance. So, the idea then is that uh, uh, cyber social learning systems uh, seek not just to improve the performance of physical devices, but of human intensive systems, service delivery systems, enabled by advances and, uh, and, and the integration of, of at least four forms of thinking, computational thinking, systems thinking, design thinking, and social thinking. And that social thinking element is absolutely crucial. We're talking about thinking uh, in terms of everything from cognitive psychology to um, mechanism design to behavioral economics and beyond. Uh, this uh, will enable uh, us to move uh, from uh, sort of uh, unprincipled and ad hoc integration of computing technologies and, 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 and human systems uh, to a much more effective uh, basis. So I want to just give you two kind of uh, kind of graphics here to communicate different views of a cyber social system. This is a, a chart by Ben Schneiderman. Uh, in the green at the bottom, you have uh, uh, the the people and the, the the delivery systems that you're trying to improve: patients, customers, passengers, students. Uh, above, you have um, the people who are essentially kind of uh, monitoring and analyzing and trying to uh, deliver improvements into that system. Uh, to the left, you have regulatory uh, agencies and uh, forms of independent oversight. And of course, these systems are often uh, threatened by malicious actors. Oh, gosh. Uh, I see that this, um, uh, this uh, slide has not rendered well um, on, the, uh, on the display here. Uh, let me just bring it up on my own computer here, and I will talk through it. Um, Uh, You'll have to uh, stop sharing uh, the file and share your screen. Uh, uh, that's okay. I think I think I'll just I think uh, let's see. I don't actually have this up on my screen. I have it up on my laptop. So so let me I, I, I can take you through it. So this is a, a highly simplified kind of schematic of some of the key elements of what we consider a cyber social learning system. So in the light yellow box at the bottom. I've depicted a socio-technical system. This is the system that's meant to be improved by cyber social uh, learning systems approaches. And all of the uh, words that you can't see under that big cyber socio-technical system label are characteristics of the kinds of systems that, uh, to, we, to which we want to apply cyber social systems approaches. And they're decidedly not the same elements that you see in physical systems. So, these socio-technical systems do live in physical environments. They have artifacts, tools, and resources, but they're also uh, intensively populated by people, institutions, uh, services, workflows, and various performance characteristics. Uh, they rely heavily on tacit knowledge uh, embedded in individuals, organizations, and large systems. Um, they uh, uh, incorporate human values, competition, economics, incentives, goals, politics, and power. Um, one always faces uh, human quirks, such as in irrationality, bias, intentionality, agency, again, power, uh, belief systems, cognitions, and, and again, quirks of human behavior. Um, uh, people in these systems hold values. They have norms, culture, laws, policy, uh, regulations, uh, and pressure to behave in certain ways. Uh, these systems include oversight, governance bodies, uh, allocation of responsibilities, authority, uh, distribution of resources, accountability issues, enforcement mechanisms. And of course, they have uh, feedback loops and 
and system dynamics of various kinds. So that's the kind of target system that we're talking about. Those are the kind of key elements of a healthcare delivery system, for example. Now in the blue font uh, at the bottom and in the blue box at the top, these are the additional elements that we see as being, or some of the additional elements we see as being necessary uh, if you want to turn a socio-technical system into a cyber-social learning system. So in, at the, uh, in, in, in blue typeface at the bottom, uh, we imagine that these systems are now uh, cut through with cyber physical infrastructure, various kinds of sensing modalities, processing, uh, collection of data, lots of software, AI analytics, autonomy, um, and of course, uh, you know, logic of control. Uh, these systems also would include such things as uh, human sensing mechanisms, communication infrastructures, uh, large scale group coordination, negotiation mechanisms, incentives to align human uh, actions with overall system objectives uh, and this sort of thing. So at one level, uh, turning a socio-technical system into a cyber-social learning system involves the incorporation of all of this kind of advanced computing stuff, um, much of it human-centered, uh, into these systems. But to have a learning system, you also need a control loop, uh, a learning loop, uh, and that's what's depicted in the blue box at the top. So they're sensing of what's going on in the cyber, social, cyber technical system, enabled by all that technology. There's analytics, uh, planning, uh, and the design of interventions off on the right lower box, lower part of the blue box, the design of interventions into socio-technical systems to move them uh, in directions that are more consistent with overall learning and uh, system improvement objectives. At the center of the control system box, the blue box, if you will, but let's not call it a control system because you can't control socio-technical systems, you can only influence them. So the blue box is maybe an influence theory uh, box rather than a control theory box. Nevertheless, at the center is a set of models uh, based on observations and data uh, leading to theories and hypotheses uh, along with evidence and judgments about their validity uh, where these System models are about um, the control system itself, the socio-technical system being managed and the environment in which it lives. Uh, and so the idea here, of course, is that you really uh, uh, analyze what's going on in your healthcare delivery system. You learn new models uh, from advanced analytics. For example, maybe you can tell when uh, healthcare delivery personnel are too uh, fatigued or stressed out to be able to work safely. And at that point, you can intervene in the system in a way that is informed by social science, organizational theory, uh, ethics, and so on and so forth uh, to reduce the likelihood of an accident. So that's an overall kind of highly simplified uh, diagram of what's going on. Of course, there would be many such control loops in such a system. The system itself would have lots of structure, um, and so um, it's more complicated than that. Uh, the real problem is that today, uh, the practice of building such systems uh, to the extent that they are being built outstrips the scientific engineering and design foundations. Um, we really don't have a discipline today of cyber social uh, systems. Uh, we want to move beyond just descriptive and predictive theories of, you know, computer intensive socio-technical systems to a framework where we have uh, valid basis for prescriptive and interventionist design uh, uh, of, of, of such systems. We want to have the actuators, if you will, uh, properly designed uh, in light of the fact that what they're dealing with is a highly complex human uh, system. Uh, we're looking to develop principles, methods, and technologies for cyber social learning systems understanding and development uh, with impact seen in major improvements in many uh, critical societal systems over time. So in this workshop series, we asked what are the gaps in knowledge today? What approaches might we develop to uh, deal with these gaps? How would we evaluate the impact of improvements in cyber social systems, uh, uh, fundamental knowledge and, uh, and technologies? And how would a research initiative address uncertainties, risks in such a program, and the problem of getting um, to scale? So I'm going to spend just the last minute of talking by surveying very quickly a couple of interesting research topics of interest that bubbled up out of this workshop. How do we build motivation, motivational structures for technology-mediated social participation in a cyber-social learning system? 
What are the mechanisms for large-scale coordination of complex human tasks? How do we deal with quality and then an analysis of data from online social networks and sources? A lot of socially acquired data is not IID and so uh, conflicts with basic assumptions in the machine learning community today. How can we think of humans as sensors? Uh, what about social media exploitation tools? We need greatly elaborated theories of learning to underpin a theory of human organizational and systems learning in CSLS. We need principles for integrating human and AI robotic elements of systems. The organization of computable knowledge at scale for decision support at scale. Person in and on the loop system design. Ethical, regulatory, and legal aspects. Design and measurement control and assurance of critical system properties. Designing these systems for ease of observation, experimentation, and adaptation. This is highly multidisciplinary work, and we lack the foundations for multidisciplinary model integration. And we need to understand how the dynamics of public opinion serve as an enabler or disabler of action based on knowledge in such systems. So we ran this series of workshops, and uh, that's sort of uh, where we've gotten to. I'm, I'm out of time, and so thank you, and I'm open for questions. Thank you, Kevin. That was great. So, so relevant and so interesting. Uh, audience, please press star one on your phone um, to ask a question or unmute your microphone on your computer. Hey, Kevin, this is Jim Spore. Thanks for presenting, and um, it was great to be part of that uh, cyber social learning meeting that you had up in Washington, D.C. Um, could you summarize? I know you've had the series of workshops now. Can you summarize where it kind of stands inside National Science Foundation or other funding agencies or any foundations stepping up to fund some of this work? Well, Jim, thank you for that question, and thank you for being involved. We certainly appreciated your, uh, your input uh, and your thoughts on both uh, service systems and, uh, and cognitive uh, systems technologies. Uh, this CSLS concept clearly sits in a context that um, is uh, deeply informed by uh, the thinking that you and your colleagues have done in both of those areas. Uh, we just finished the third and last of the workshops uh, last week. Uh, we're in the process now of formulating our um, overall uh, uh, outcomes, recommendations, and corresponding reports and slide decks. Uh, so we haven't yet gone to the uh, gone to the foundation. You know, we have been um, um, in communication, of course, with people at the foundation and elsewhere. Uh, but at this point, um, uh, you know, we haven't uh, made an ask, as it were, and so um, it's still a little bit early to. Uh, think that there would be uh, any uh, action on the part of uh, uh, the policymakers at this point. It's uh, we're just not quite there yet. Okay, and um, I'm going to send you an invitation to an NSF-sponsored workshop that I'm uh, co-PI on. That's out here in Silicon Valley, March 29th okay. and 30th. And uh, um, you know, uh, it would be great to get some of the cyber social learning system thinking that you've developed and presented here into that workshop, I think it would inform and, and align really well. It's a smart service system <laughs> workshop. So thanks thanks again, Kevin. I'll send that to you. Yes, right indeed. Away. Thank you very much. Yep. Thanks, Jim. Um, we have about one minute. Is there anyone else who has a question? Scott, I'll, I'll forward your question to um, Kevin after the meeting. Anyone else have questions? All right, we're just about out of time, but I'll ask a real quick one. And Kevin, is cyber social systems being taught in universities? Oh, that's a great question. Um, um, uh, not not yet, not as a discipline. I mean, this has been a um, uh, this has been a uh, 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 this is really a, a rapidly uh, emerging area, but it's uh, still uh, been emerging uh, pretty much in the group of uh, people who um, uh, have been uh, involved in these workshops. Uh, the idea that we should formulate a curriculum for, if nothing else, than for a graduate seminar or uh, a class or two um, uh, is, is definitely on our agenda. Uh, the, the production of, um, of um, uh, bibliographies of, of work related to this topic from, uh, from Klein's work on multidisciplinary uh, uh, investigation to service systems and cognitive systems all uh, would be relevant, but no, we haven't, we haven't gotten there yet either. 
So this is a very early peak. This is a very early peak at uh, at, at what's coming. Yeah, uh, it'll be fascinating to to um, to, to uh, start the studies on that. Well, thank you so much for being our presenter. I loved your presentation. Audience, thank you for joining. We have a, another great speaker next week, so please come back. And um, thanks again, Kevin. Uh, we'll see you next time. Diane, it's been my pleasure, and thank you to everyone who was on the call. I really appreciate it. Happy to take questions and comments. My email address is on the screen. And we'll also continue the conversation on our LinkedIn discussion group. Thanks, everyone. Terrific. See you there. Bye-bye.